What is going on YouTube? Gavin's here and welcome to this new video. Today I will be presenting you a pre-city OS, yet another distribution based on Arch Linux. But is it really different? Let's check it out. A pre-city OS is a fairly new Linux distro based on Arch Linux. And by saying fairly new, I mean it's kinda still broken here and there. But let's start from the beginning. As I start the ISO, the first thing I notice is that there is no clear way to install the OS. I am greeted by a customized GNOME desktop, but nothing more than that. No install icon, nothing. I had to get to the GNOME menu and search for install to find the actual installer app. But guess what? It didn't appear to be working. Fortunately, I'm decently experienced with Linux, so I knew it was some minor issue kicking in just at the right time. Made some research system wide to find out that the installer OS uses is Calamares, the installer from the popular distro Manjaro. The process apparently got stuck for no particular reason, so I killed it and restarted it from the terminal with super user privileges. Knowing Calamares already, I found the installation from this point on to be pretty much effortless. I mean, Manjaro has been around for a while and their installer is pretty good and stable. Something curious I found out later on is that for some reason, in a Apricius repo, there's CNCHI, uh, the installer that I refuse to pronounce. Anyway, it's the installer from An Antergos, another popular Arch based distro. I also made a review of it, so if you're interested, I will leave a card on the top right corner in this video, so maybe you want to check it out. The idea here is they're probably planning to switch to Kinky. I don't know, I don't feel like making assumptions at this point, but this is quite a hint. Anyway, the good thing about using Calamaris is that you don't need an internet connection to install a pre-city OS. Many times I had to deploy an Arch installation fast, but when I use either Architect or Antergos or even Vanilla Arch, I need a stable internet connection since, well, Arch is traditionally a net install. But this doesn't happen with a pre-city OS thanks to Calamaris, so thanks to the Manjaro theme. As the system starts, I'm happy to see GDM instead of LightDM or some other fancy login screen. I like to keep things simple and GDM fits perfectly this need of mine. Curiously enough, as GNOME starts, I can't help but notice that it's stuck at the default settings. A few moments later, some magic happens and it suddenly gets to look exactly like it did in the live. Again, I'm not sure what happened here, but I think uh, this sudden change slash fix can be related to the little script called first run that's set as startup application in GNOME Tweak 2. I wasn't able to find that file anywhere in the system, so I'm just guessing it's some configuration script buried deep in the system files. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is show you the customization that Apricity OS uses here to make GNOME look like this. Apparently, the theme is called Arctic Apricity, but honestly, I know this theme and I've been using it for quite a while now. It's Arc GTK, just with a different name. I'm not sure if they have the permission of the original author or if they made any changes to this theme that justify the rebranding, but honestly, to me, it just looks like Arc GTK. About the shell theme, it's not from Arc theme, but I can tell if it's their original work. The icon theme, well, it's obviously based off Numic Circle, but some icons here and there look a bit different, so at least uh, here the rebranding could be legit. About the extensions, they made quite a decent selection, and it makes for a better out of the box GNOME experience, in my opinion. For what I see, they probably try to make the interface more familiar to new users with a dock on the bottom, the clock moved to the right side of the panel, the applet integration with top icons and some other tweaks here and there, they managed to make GNOME look pretty much like OS X, which is not like a bad thing, especially if you're targeting new users that don't necessarily have a great experience with Linux. GNOME seems to be at its latest iteration, 3.18.2, which is kind of expected from an Arch-based distro. Just to make sure, I checked the repositories in pacman.conf and yes, they're using exactly Arch repos. And that's a pretty good move in my opinion. This way they don't have to maintain important core repositories themselves 
and they can focus on other things. But yeah, there is an appreciate specific repo though, and unfortunately they don't seem to be working hard enough on maintaining it. In fact, some packages in it are pretty outdated. The easiest example here is probably Google Chrome. In their repos, it's stuck at version 45, while the latest stable version is 47. Honestly, they could have just installed the extra packages for MayUI instead of making their own repo. It would have made more sense. For package management, they decided to include Pamac as a Pac-Man frontend. I can't really say I like this choice. In my experience, Pamac, while being one of the best looking Pac-Man frontends, isn't exactly reliable and sometimes it locks the Pac-Man database without releasing it and if you don't know it, it can lead to quite some headaches. Oh, and by the way, the terminal defaults to ZSH instead of Bash. A curious choice, I don't really like moving away from Bash, I find it more simple and it fits well my terminal experience, but I know ZSH is a well-known and well-developed software, so it, it's probably fine. One more peculiar thing about the Pricity is the amount of included apps. They pretty much went kitchen sink here. There's all the classic, from LibreOffice to GIMP, Uncomplicated Firewall and FileZilla to even plain Linux and Wine, along with a more exotic selection of software. Let's start with ICE, a pretty straightforward app to create and manage web apps. Following we find the sync thing, a really good tool to sync your files between your devices in the local network. This includes a desktop PC, a laptop and even a phone or a tablet. Then we have Simple Backup. Well, the name says it all, it's a backup solution. You can schedule backups and choose the location where to save them, it's a pretty nice addition overall. Now my impression about this distro is weird. I remember back in the days there were lots of Ubuntu based distros that in some way tried to deliver no more than a pre bloated OS. I kinda feel the same with the Pricity OS now. I mean, it doesn't really bring anything new to the table, it's just a pre bloated arch. Now, this doesn't mean it's bad, but in some way it's not all that great either. I try to remember that this is still a fairly young project, maybe they have better plans for the future, I don't know. Really I wanted to make this review just because this distro was drawing quite a lot of attention and I just wanted to make it clear that, come on, it's nothing special after all. Now if anyone from the Appreciate OS team is watching this, I don't want to be disrespectful, but take a hint from this review. Maybe you should try to focus on bringing something new and unique to the table. I think you guys have the right potential. Just try to find something that could make Apricity OS unique and different from other distros like Manjaro or Antergos. So guys, before wrapping up this video, I just wanted to thank you all because we just got past 1000 subscribers. I know there are many YouTubers that are way bigger than me, but for me, this is a great milestone. Thank to you all guys. I reached this point and hopefully I will continue growing and the channel will keep growing so that I can deliver the best content I can to you as often as I can. So guys, this is gonna really wrap up this video now. Uh, thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.